Oh, hey, look, an update for the most disappointing game of all time. I wonder what they've included. Oh, wow. Could it be? Finally, after two years? <laughs> So it seems No Man's Sky has finally delivered on some of the promises it made over two years ago. It was a release in August 2016, I think. Um, Sean Murray digging himself a grave, confirming many things that were supposed to be in the game, like multiplayer. Remember when you confirmed that, Sean Murray? Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Anyway. Well, it's it's taken a long time and several updates from what I've heard. Luckily, I didn't dive into this and I kind of smelt something wrong with this game from the get-go. It was a little too ambitious for my liking. Um, they have so far added with this update a lot of stuff. I'm not going to go through all of the little bits and pieces. You can go to the No Man's Sky website. Um, you can look up what exactly they've got patch notes and bits and pieces on there anyway. Uh, but I actually ran into it through seeing this article here um, on pushsquare.com. Uh, DLC review. Where, eh, it's not really DLC, it's an update. Next makes No Man's Sky the best it's ever been. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> if you added anything to the game, it's going to make it better because it was so bare bones when it was released that it, everyone knows the uproar that it caused. It was probably the biggest disappointment in gaming that I have ever known and a massive debacle for Hello Games, which is actually local to me. I think it's Guildford-based. It's literally like 10 miles, 10 miles away, something like that, uh, south of England. You don't really get games developers down here apart from maybe somewhere in London. Uh, but they're a very sort of a local games developer. Yeah, there we go, Guildford Studio. Um, they got themselves into such trouble, and that's why I wanted to to talk about this really, um, because there's there's kind of two sides that I've seen arguing about this at the moment. Um, no Man's Sky has always been sort of like a resource collecting, um, gathering game which added base building and other elements. As it says, uh, in the foundation update, it brought base building, Pathfinder added ground vehicles, photo mode, and way more besides, and Atlas Rises introduced a narrative element. But none of this was in the game to begin with, and a lot of this was directly promised uh, to gamers, and they paid full price. The game, it was a full priced game, and you paid for that. And they, I know a lot of people, um, my ex included, paid full price for this game and got a very poorly built not even good well it could be considered good looking but it looks a lot better now um game to start with and it a lot of people didn't spend much time with it at all and the ultimate kick in the teeth was when you re <laughs> when you reached <laughs> the center of the universe and you got that Great surprise. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a massive kick in the balls from them. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen a couple of arguments. Uh, I've seen some people saying, at completely lauding Hello Games for actually delivering on what they promised, which I kind of agree with. I, I really commend Sean Murray, even after his like, public execution. Um, he, he stood his ground, he's taken responsibility, even though he lied through his teeth. To sell this game, um, I'm assuming they made enough money, and they have put all these updates out. They have added the things that they said they would have added, and it's now to a state that it could be considered a proper full-priced game and has all the elements that they need inside it. Um, but I feel like some of the hype is just getting too much for this game. It really doesn't deserve it. It's it's a game. And it's how it should be. Uh, it's how it should have been two years ago. But you have um, things like Holy Holy Smokes, No Man's Sky, Next Looks Gorgeous. Um, there's this one about uh, like oh, the narrative element to it. You, there's this secret alien or something. But this should have been in there. It's not... It, it's nothing groundbreaking. It, it really should have been in there. 
when it was shown at E3, and they showed those demos which were completely set up with all the dinosaurs in the tropical forest, etc. Um, and also, it, the, even though they've updated it, it has brought some performance hiccups. I, I do kind of expect that with a game of that size, to be quite honest. But my main issue is the people that bought this game at full price have wasted their money. Because now, as, as you can see, if I click on this here, you go to the PlayStation Store, it's 15 quid. So... <laughs> You could have bought, you could have saved all your money, waited two years, paid fifteen pound, and got an entirely, basically a different, different experience. Um, it's absolutely completely different from when it first released. It it was basically a free to play game when it came out. Um, it's currently sitting at three and a half stars on PlayStation Network. I mean, if you're into exploration and stuff like that, it's worth picking up for fourteen ninety nine, but. It was an absolute ripoff to begin with, and I can't, I can't praise them. I'm sorry. I, I respect them. I respect Hello Games, and I respect uh, Sean Murray. But it doesn't make up at all for what was done, uh, what was said, and the only good thing that's come out of it is it set a precedent that we don't want games in bare bones situations when they release. Um, it's happened in Street Fighter uh, with Street of Fighter Five, where it came out with no characters, no modes, and they just added it as they went along. Why should consumers be paying full price for not a full product? I don't go to a shop and buy a cake, get a slice, and get told, "Oh, don't worry, we'll give you the other slices over the next twelve months when I've already paid it." It's not a subscription service. Now, if they'd released a full game like it is now, and said we're going to add more, you'll have to pay for that extra. Now that's fair enough, that's normal DLC, that's normal uh, season pass stuff. I mean, I still have issues with very bare bones season passes because it's not worth it, but that would have been um, a better situation anyway. Uh, but yeah, let me, we'll have a little quick scroll down, I'm not going to play the video, you can play that yourself. But uh, yeah, it's got um, proper multiplayer, my god, you can actually play with your friends, it's a revolutionary topic. It's revolutionary. <laughs> oh, I miss the days of couch co-op. But um, yeah, being playing able to play with your friends is going to make it so so much nicer. Just wandering around an empty, broken hollow of a galaxy just drove some people mad. I mean, you could do that for about half an hour and then it's boring. It, I don't know. Um, we'll see if Thieves worse. Probably, or, ooh, probably not. You could at least play with your friends, I guess, at the beginning of that. Um, you can build bases and stuff. Uh, it's community. Yeah, meh. Yeah. Base building. I mean, you can do this in so many games already. You can do this in free-to-play games. I don't know if it's something to be uh, commended. Third person. Woo! Like <laughs> these, these are basic features for most games, but they're sort of idolised now because <laughs> of how this was released. Customization, wow! Uh, this this is quite cool. I do like the freighter enhancements and the fact that you can build your own um, you build your own fleet. Essentially, the space stuff does look pretty cool. Uh, crafting, I've never been a fan of crafting stuff. It's a bit of a grind fest for some of that stuff. And they have improved the AI on a lot of the uh, aliens apparently as well. And you've got the missions. Um, yeah, missions and structure. So I think it's to do with the narrative. The opening section of the game has been overhauled, introducing new story elements and an early taste of advanced gameplay features, as well as a new mission chain for play for players with bases. Envoys in space stations, envoys, envoys, envoys. I'm not sure how you say that. Offer rewards and tributes to high-ranking members of their guilds. Mission types have been expanded with photography, feeding, freighter attack and defense, archaeology, and specialized hunting missions. Now these aren't going to be tailored missions, they're going to be like auto-generated ones, so don't expect a massive amount from it, but it is still nice to see that that's been added in there. Um, they've got a galactic map, there's communities now that uh, I think I saw something about communities coming together, people kind of um, role-playing as, as different factions. Which is pretty cool, um, and it shows the potential that's out there. Um, this is the sort of secret creature, I think, that, that was mentioned in one article. 
Um, oh, new audio. There's been a massive overhaul of the uh, of the visuals as well. I mean, it does look a lot prettier. I wouldn't say it's that that picture especially actually. I wouldn't say it's astounding. Um, for two years worth of extra work, you ex you would expect that anyway. Uh, and that's why I'm saying it's 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 enough it's not too little but it is way too late i had completely forgotten about no man's sky to be quite honest with you it had become a a blip on the radar only noted for the massive failure and sean murray's awful awful lies you're disgracing all englishmen sean murray actually you're disgracing my name my name is sean hope blessfully not spelt the same i do not spell it s-e-a-n um, anyway, that's my little take on it. Uh, I thought I'd give you an opinion because I just don't like to see it being praised for this. It's not acceptable. It shouldn't be acceptable. It's respectful. They could have just dropped it, I guess. Um, but now the people who paid full price are going to be a bit peeved that people can pick it up for 15 quid and basically have a way better experience. You can always go back to it, but... Uh, anyway, that's all I have to say on the matter. I'm going to go back to sweating my ass off as this incredibly hot British summer continues, which is very freaky. Uh, it feels a bit surreal in my opinion.